Being in the era of artificial intelligence, as a developer, have you started to think about how you can build intelligent applications and render AI-driven experiences for your users? Let's look at an implementation on an app that we use almost on a daily basis. I have this email that has an image and I'm sending it to a group with 168 recipients. Out of these 168 people, how will I ensure that any recipients with visual impairments will access the email content just like everyone else? Well, Outlook has this feature where it detects that my message content might not be accessible to everyone. And so it gives me an alert with an option to address the accessibility issues. So we will select this to see the issues raised and we see that one of the errors is that the image lacks a description, but why is this important? With accessibility in mind, this description will be used by screen readers and other assistive technologies to convey the content and the purpose of the image to people who cannot see it. So Outlook will give me two options. I can manually add a description. And so for option two, we see that Outlook is using an intelligent service to auto-generate a description by analyzing the image. So why am I showing you this? I did a challenge project for Microsoft Learn and I built something that I think is cool. Let me show you. Well, I've got this simple React web app that does two things really. Uh, first, I give it a prompt and it generates an image based on my prompt. So let's test this out. I will ask for a realistic photo of a squirrel in a superhero uniform because who wouldn't want to see a squirrel in a superhero uniform, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, look, look at that photo. Um, I love the superhero pose above all else. I'm actually going to save this image. It looks really nice. Uh, anyway, you will see that my prompt actually changes into a URL that points to the image that is currently on preview on this web app. Now, this is a completely new image generated by the DALI model, and you will see in this video how we got to implement and use the API to connect to an Azure Open AI service resource. Then the next thing that my simple app can do is I will click this analyze button and my app will use computer vision to analyze my image and give me some data about it, including a caption, a tags, and any text that is displayed on the image. So we'll test this and you'll see that my app will generate a caption from the image. And so it returns a squirrel wearing a cape and a mask. And then it kind of notices the S on the uniform and picks that out as text from the image. And it also assigns an animal tag, which is fairly accurate. So in this video, I'll kind of walk through some of the steps I took to build this project. And if you want to take on this challenge project yourself, you can visit aka.ms slash AI kickoff challenge, or you can post this video and scan the QR code on your screen to access instructions on how you can build out a similar or even better project. Right, so at this point, I have a React template, which as you can see shows Hello World, but this isn't a Hello World tutorial. So let's add some code to render a simple user interface. So first we'll add a header, which is basically the title of the challenge project that we are working on. I'll add a text label that will read insert URL when we want to analyze an image or enter prompt when we want to generate a new image. And I'll follow that with an input component to hold that content. I'll then add two buttons, the analyze and the generate buttons, but we won't add any functionalities yet. Then we'll add a section that will hold two columns. One will basically display the response that we get from the computer vision API, and one will basically preview the image that we generate. And then down below, we'll have a text area component that will hold the JSON output that we get from the APIs for us to analyze and understand more. So our UI components are ready, but they're still just decorations on the screen. Let's add some functionalities to them. So first, we'll need to add the onclick properties for our buttons uh, so that we can reference to functions, the analyze image and the generate image that will implement the two features. We need to define these two functions. And so I'll do that at the top of my file. So next up, we'll use the React use state hook to hold some state variables like the input prompt, the response text, caption text, image text, and the image tag. 
and then use use stage to uh, create our variables. And next up, we'll need to assign these values to our respective components. So for our input text component, we'll also add the on change property, and we'll add an event listener to simply trigger our set input prompt um, function every time the value changes. So the first function will be the analyze image function, uh, which will basically be making a call to the image analysis 4.0 API. Now for us to use this API, you will be required to have a computer vision resource on Azure. So we'll confirm that I have created my computer vision resource on Azure and I can access my endpoint and keys since this is what we will use to authenticate against the service. Now, speaking of our credentials, we will need to install the .env package to allow us to safely store our credentials in a .env file and avoid pushing this on GitHub accidentally. So we will safely store our credentials in our .env file. And so to use it in our script, we're going to add the require.env line on our code. Then we're going to declare some variables that will store these endpoints and keys from our .env file. First, defining the API endpoint, which requires some, some parameters. For example, we need to define the features uh, that we want to get back from the API. If you're interested in generating a caption in the tags, and also generating or reading any text that is visible on the image and we'll specify the language. And then in our headers, we will pass in the content type and our key to authorize um, this call. And then for the body, we'll pass in the URL of our image. So you'll see that we are making a post call to the API and we're storing our response in a variable called response. And then we take our response object and convert it into JSON. And we use set response text to uh, display this JSON content on our web page. So let's test this. I have a URL to a very cute image. We'll analyze and we'll see the response that we get back from the API. So in this case, we have our caption result, which has the text that is being used to uh, describe the image, which is a cat on top of a dog, fairly accurate. We also have our read result which has any text that is identified on the image. And we have our tags result with an array of several tags assigned to this image, but we'll work with the first one. So we'll set this into our variables and display these results on our web page as well. So we're going to use our state variables to update these data and display on our web page. And throughout this project, you've seen GitHub Copilot trying to help me. It has been very accurate. But in this case, you'll see that it's actually getting the structure of my JSON wrong. So it thinks that my caption is in a captions array. So I will quickly review and fix that. So it, that's something to note while using Copilot. It provides high quality suggestions, but you still need to double check the suggestions and confirm that it's giving you the right piece of code. So this looks good. Let's now look at the second function. So for our generate image function, it's gonna be a lot similar to what we've just done. And we'll also use the DALI2 API. So again, we'll need to create an Azure OpenAI resource. We'll confirm that I have mine created and we'll basically use the DALI2 model that sits on top of Microsoft Azure. We'll need to grab our endpoint and key so as to use this resource in our application. So first thing, we will save the user's input as a prompt. Then we will define our API endpoints. We will pass in the content type and the API key into our headers for authorization. And as part of our body, we'll pass in the prompt. We'll pass in the number of images to be generated and the size of the image to be generated. So initially, you'll see that we make a post call to this um, endpoint. We are passing our URL. Uh, we're passing we're passing the endpoint as well as the body and headers. Then in our response headers, we're going to extract the value of the operation location. And so this operation location will give us a second URL that will be required to do a get request, which will in turn give us a URL to the image that has been generated by the model. So we have implemented a loop uh, to keep sending that get request until we get a succeeded status. And then we save that image URL in our variable. Let's have a quick look at how that data is structured. I'll ask for a smiling alligator as a goalkeeper. He generates 
And as you can see, we'll have a preview of the image that has been created. We'll also get our response. We get our response and uh, part of the data is a URL that points to this image. And once we analyze this image, we get our summary right here on the web page. And that's it for this video. If you want to learn more and practice more, visit aka.ms slash AI kickoff challenge and you'll access this challenge project and you'll start your journey into building intelligent applications and AI driven apps for your users. Again, we'll share additional resources on this video description and do stay tuned for more such videos. Goodbye.